Hey everybody, welcome back to Change Your Perspective, Change Your Awareness, Change Your Life. I am Dr. McLean and hashtag that felon doctor here to actually continue the Dear Diary series. I wasn't planning on it. This is definitely going to be the last one. However, this morning, hot off the press, 5 a.m., things just came in and I was like, okay, this is a Dear Diary entry and I guess we'll do one more day of it. So I'm going to hop right in it, guys, and then we will talk about it. Um, because this is like super relevant and hot off the press. So let's just jump in. Dear Diary, they say that patience is a virtue and I suppose that's true, but there comes a time for things to be due. And when you keep giving and giving and giving without getting or reaping, it doesn't feel like great living. I know we aren't supposed to say what's in it for me, but after a while, that's all I can see. The returns that haven't come on investments made, the time that's been given, the money not made. I'm too tired for this, too exhausted to wait, but I know that God's timing is never late. I've asked for more patience. It's a thing I don't have left. I've given so much, I feel fucking bereft. I can't keep carrying burdens, both theirs and mine. My shit is too heavy, I don't have the time. I can't help them, I, I can help them, but they can't help me. Why stick around for partners I don't see? I hold up my end, but they don't hold up theirs. I try and I try and they don't seem to care. What else is there to do but let it all go? Let them do their own shit, I'm here to grow. So when they ask me for patience, the answer is no. And so um, this is more of a poem, I suppose, than a question asking. Like This is obviously less angsty. Everything's less angsty when it rhymes, you know what I mean? But um, <clears throat> the theme that is coming up for me in a big way is patience. Now, I want to talk about patience because patience is the first step in proper love, okay? I could probably do a series. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe this will be the first series of love. Hmm. I don't know. This could be a deep diary. It could be the next day. We'll see. Ultimately, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Keeps no records of wrongs. Always perseveres. Always hopes. Always trusts. Love never fails. Right? Now, if you go to the King James of that, it's actually charity. However, um, when it comes down to the way in which we love and care and provide for people, patience is the first step. Now, let me tell you, I know my flaws, and there are three of them. One of which is impatience, not a patient girl. Second of which is impulsiveness. I want what I want now. Third of which is arrogance. I know, I don't know how, but I have to work at it. Being humble, I mean. So I know my major three flaws. I've got more than that, obviously, but those are the three that always come up that I have to focus on. They all go back to a root of pride, which we I've talked about vices already. You can jump back to that series. But I know mine come out of a root of pride, right? Impatient, impulsive, and arrogant all come from pride. I want what I want. Ego, ego, ego. The reason why the first real step in love is patience is because it means, okay, I'm prioritizing your needs before mine in this moment. I need to, I'm going to give you the space and the grace to be you, be human, mess up, make mistakes, and I'm gonna be patient with you, right? So as a former teacher, I'm gonna tell you right now, patience is something I had to cultivate. And it was easy, like it was not hard to, to for the most part, when I was teaching, to cultivate patience. It's like, they don't know what they don't know, like the kids are gonna be kids. It's a very easy thing to like, just kind of like give them the space and the grace to mess up, right? Adults are harder. We forget that they're still children at heart, most of them, because we, a lot of us function out of zero to 14. Zero to seven being that theta state where everything directly goes into our subconscious, no conscious mind from zero to seven. Then from seven to 14, where we're developing our conscious mind and things lodge up in there. And so really 95% of us, 95% of people, no, 95% of functioning is out of the subconscious. 5% is out of the conscious mind, all of that gets cemented in by 14. So if you've never gone back and checked your childhood out, you're still functioning out of it. There is no other way around it. That is the science of the fact. Like that's not the Michelina of the fact, that is science. So if you've never gone back and examined with a critical adult eye, you are still functioning from zero to 14. No problem, which is why I say, everybody who looks like an adult, for the most part is emotionally still a child. And that's fine, except that we don't treat people like that. I work hard now to treat people like that. 
I give people a lot of space, a lot of grace. Everybody's God's child. So it's very easy for me to be like, okay. However, there comes a time where you keep saying the same thing. The behavior isn't changing. It's like, okay, you go ahead and do you. I'm going to remove myself from this situation because I don't have the patience now that you've exhausted it because I've given a lot of it to you and you're keeping up the same patterns. It takes a while for patterns to change. Let's be fair. That is true. The older someone is, the more their neural pathways are already kind of set up. So it can take a while to turn a ship around. This is true. However, you also cannot help someone who will not help themselves. And so, um, there is a tough thing between the self and the partners, the self and the community, where there has to be a balance. Sometimes in the community, you do need to kind of put your own needs sort of on the back burner for the best of the community. That's true, okay? Sacrifice is important. Yes. However, the self, you need to know what needs are being sacrificed. It has to be an intentional thing like, hey, I know I have this need right now. However, it is more pressing that I put that aside and put this ahead, right? Um, as an example, I had a need for children to do their homework, all right? But when they didn't do their homework, the more pressing need was figuring out why they felt like they couldn't get it done. Now, if I prioritize my need, as many teachers do, I need this homework, you don't have it, you get a zero. That doesn't lead to any growth, it doesn't lead to cultivation of anything. That sucks, okay? That's death energy. Instead, it's like, okay, hey, why didn't you get to do this homework? Like, why didn't you prioritize correctly, schedule correctly? What's going on in your life? Like, you know I can't do anything with no homework. I can't do anything with a zero. Zero times anything is still zero. So why didn't you give me a little something, something? Then you can have a conversation. Now, the first, the second, maybe the third time that happens, you're like, no problem. I can give you a lot of grace, patience. But after the fourth, fifth, sixth times, it's like, yo, this isn't hard. We've already talked about this. You're just not doing it. Therefore, I'm holding you accountable. This is the difference between patience and enabling, which a lot of people don't know. There comes a time where patience runs out. There comes a time... I technically, I like to go by what is called the three strike rule in my head. And also, I think I get this from my mom, I think, actually. Um, and also baseball, obviously, you know, baseball. Um, I played softball for like 20 something years. So what ends up happening is if you do the same thing, and I do mean the exact same thing, three different times, I'm not here for it. That's not to say that the behaviors cropped up in different places. That's a little different, okay? Like, if you're bad at decision-making, that's gonna show up here and here and here and here. And that's actually like four different things, even though it's the same root. But if you do the same behavior over and over and over again, we've got a problem, right? So going back to that example with the missing homework, this, the root is you don't know how to schedule, maybe. But the behavior that keeps happening is you're not doing your homework. Now let's say the first time they don't, they miss their homework, but then the next time they miss class. And then the next time they miss reading the novel, right? That's actually three different things. It's the same behavior. They don't know how to schedule correctly, but they're really working hard to get all their homework in. And in doing that, they realize, okay, well, I can't get these other things going on. That's a different thing because they're still trying to fix the behavior and the action. But if the person keeps doing the same action, they don't even care to fix the action, let alone the behavior underneath. Therefore, we don't have time for that after a certain point. So that, when it comes to patience, yes, patience is a virtue. Yes, patience can be difficult. We all have the seed of patience in us. I find for myself, I'm more inclined to be less patient when I'm short on resources. As an example, time, energy, attention, and money, right? If I'm short on time, if my thought is, I don't have time for this, I'm going to be more patient, uh, more impatient rather. If I don't have energy or attention, like if I'm, I'm emotionally drained, I don't have the energy for this right now. If you've ever heard that, I don't have the money for this right now, right? Patience comes 
when we have an abundance of resources a lot of times. It's like, oh, I have time for this, of course. Impatience comes when we're lacking resources. A lot of times I have noticed that's a trigger for me. My impatience is more apt to crop up if I'm running late to something or I don't have the money for something or I don't have the energy for something or I can't give my attention to this thing right now. I'm more inclined to be impatient. So that's a thing that you want to always be aware of because like if you're functioning in impatience, you are actually functioning out of fear. Perfect love casts out fear. If you are in a lack space, impatient space, that's a fearful space, you're not in love. Now to flip it inward, as annoying as that is, if you're not being patient with yourself, You already know where I'm going, guys. If you're not being patient with yourself, you're not giving yourself love. All right. And nothing can grow when there's no love. Love allows for growth. Love allows for life. And life is growing and motion and change. And all these beautiful things. And so, um, patience you want to be aware of where your patience is and isn't and why, you know? So I know right now for me personally, my patience is very limited, very thin on the patience right now in life and not just in certain aspects, which also means for the most part, very close to a breakthrough. That's kind of how these things tend to go. As you can see it, you can see the seasons and the signs. You can know if you are like, kind of at your wit's end, something is coming on the horizon. You just need to hold on a little longer. That's you. That's usually what I found to be true, right? Cause like if you're thinking about breakthrough or like things popping forth or like any kind of like new, it gets a little more intense beforehand, even a labor, right? Think about a labor. You're at, you're at massively quick contractions, a lot of pain, like before that new birth of a thing comes, you're at the worst place. So if you are in a place right now that feels like the worst place, breakthrough's probably coming and you just have to hold on a little longer. That's really tough because they're asking you to push more when you feel like you have nothing to give, right? Pregnancy is a great example of this because it's asking you for more effort when you're like, I have just had effort for nine months and also the last 48 hours. You want me to push again? You want me to push more? All I wanna do is die. And again, I've never had a child and I've never actually even had a scare of pregnancy. I've never, I know nothing about children as far as that is concerned. I just conceptually know the process. And I can imagine how I'd be feeling as a mother. I've never done it myself. So, Pretty much everybody I know at this point has. I don't know that I know any women without children at this point, for the most part. Former students, that doesn't really, not that that doesn't count, but they're still like 23. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. So patience, patience, having it with yourself, having it with others, but also knowing when enough is enough. And it's a delicate balance. It's a delicate dance of like, okay, I'm going to give you patience, but I, at this point I, I'm flipping over into enabling you. That's not productive. Enabling is not productive. Like I'm going to give you the space and grace to change. See if you can do it. Give it however much time it might take. Make sure there's no repetitive behaviors. If they are, make sure they're like a little different. Cool. because enabling leads to zero accountability. Zero accountability leads to cowardice and never taking accountability equals victim mentality most of the time. We don't like that, right? It's never my fault, never have to take accountability. So there's a fine line between patience and enabling. And like for me right now, my patience is limited in a lot of ways. Um, and I know that, and I woke up this morning, like four different things happened with people. And I was like, what? what is going on here? Four different things happened with people that were like, and I was like, no, 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 this is not, 
like I can't. So that's why we got a new Dear Diary entry today. But it might be, we might go into the beginning of, uh, might go into the beginning of love. This might be a Dear Diary slash love or something. And we might go into it because love is patient. Love is kind. And let me tell you right now, when I was really moving through my healing journey and like really trying to like show up differently in my life, that is something I focused on. And I still do focus on every single one of those. Being patient, being kind, what it looks like, how it looks like, how does it actually show up in my life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, there's definitely a lot. There's a lot there. Anyway, um, so that should be the actual last year diary entry. I hope it's helpful to you. Um, if you've got somebody who keeps trying your patience, you probably are an enabling at that point. Um, you probably stepped into enabling people pleasing, no boundaries. That's where like the difficulties come, right? So um, that being said, I hope this is helpful. Um, as you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching is possibly an option if you wanna work through some of this stuff. We have a school, the link is in the description below. That'll help you 10X your processes. If you are liking this, subscribe, hit the bell, um, comment below, tell your friends, and I will see you guys on the next video.